pretty morning. I'm watching all the cabbage butterflies. I'm sitting here having a cup of coffee. And I'm watching all the cabbage butterflies. And I'm thinking, well, I could go shush them off. I could tool everything. That's only got a half a tool around it. But it worked. Just a half a tool stopped some stuff. And I'm watching the hummingbirds feeding. I'll show you in a minute why they're hanging around here too. I'm feeding them. No, I'm not feeding them nectar. I'm feeding them fruit flies. And it got quiet. There was a squirrel screaming a minute ago. But the cabbage butterflies, I'm letting them go ahead and lay your eggs. Bush tits come in here and feed. It's been a tough year for a lot of birds. A real tough year here in Southern California because we are in one of the biggest droughts ever. We haven't had rain at all. And I've talked about that a lot. So without the rain, they're not getting their insects. And they're, oh, let's look at the moringa. You're going to look with me. And now I'm going to bore you all to death. So be aware. This is nothing more than a vlog. Let's see if I can get my camera focused. Where'd he go? I saw him, but I don't see him. Is that him? Okay, let's see if I can get this. There he is. You're seeing him with me. He's feeding off the flowers on the ring. Okay, I think he left. Okay, let's back up. While my camera backs up, I can talk. Let me get it back. I have to change my camera over because I use an HX400 Sony, which they still sell. They've had this thing for years. I guess they figured this was their last model. Then they went on to other things because they started with the 200, which was my first camera on this series. Absolutely loved it. Then I quickly switched over to the 300. Gary's got my 200. Yeah, he likes his 200. But I wanted a 50 zoom. I know how to kick the camera into an 800 zoom, but that's another story. And that is really cool. It's basically tricking the camera. And then let's see. And then the 300 I didn't like because there were some features on there I didn't like. There were the, I don't know, there was just a couple things. I wanted to get the 400 because the 400 could do a little bit more. And then when I got the 400, which is this model, they took away the ability to take photos while you're videotaping. And that's kind of sad. Even though I can pull it off of the computer, it's never the same. So they took that away. But I, gee, I can't remember anymore what the 300 couldn't do. Is it the eyepiece? I think it was either half. Yeah, I think it had to be either on or off. And this one is an either or, which is really big to me. So I can leave it on the LCD. And then when I go to the eyepiece to use it to look through the lens, then, which you're really not looking through the lens, it's a digital eyepiece, but it works, so it doesn't matter. But then I don't have to switch it where the other one I did. It's just so pretty. It's quiet, except for the buzz of the hummingbirds. Okay, you, you said you're feeding the hummingbirds. Let me show you. A couple of the papayas fell off. Ew, they're rotten. You will never be able to see it. Oh, yes, you will. Look at that. I'm hoping you can. Let me get out of, this. Let me get out of the light. I'll walk around the other side. See all that? See that? Those are our friends. I was going to compost this. We have so many papayas. Makes fantastic compost. Remember wherever I throw these three rotten papayas, or is it two? I think it's one, two big ones. Wherever I throw these, they're going to grow. Well, the hummingbirds are eating from that. So Gary had it. He brought it in the house. It was sitting in a bucket. I said, they're rotting. He goes, I know they fell off and there's so many. And he didn't get to freeze it. And I said, well, I'll just compost it. He goes, go ahead. And I said, well, first I'm going to just let it sit because I can see that the fruit flies are going to it. And I'm telling you, oh, they'll dive bomb these buckets. So I never have a camera when they're doing it, but they'll just come and they'll just dive bomb it. So that's what's really cute because that's a big food source for them. They have to be eating bugs like that. They have to in eat small insects because the water that we leave them, the sugar water, which it's probably the biggest part of their diet. See, he's going to guard that one. The thing is, they're not getting their calcium and other vitamins they need. So that's the difference. So we have to put other things. Well, we don't have to put it out. They'll find it. It's around. I mean, even these little cabbage butterflies laying eggs, if they saw the eggs, they'd probably eat that too. 
but those will go for like bush tits, the real tiny little wrens, they'll, they'll pick all that up. So if they go underneath and they see the eggs, they'll eat the eggs. Or better yet, as soon as they hatch, the little caterpillars, they'll go ahead and they'll take the caterpillars. Oh, I found my first hornworm the other day on the tomato plant and the red toad over there. And I picked them off the leaf and I dropped them on the ground. That's all I did. So that means a bird came and found them. But they've been really cleaning off the insects. Again, there hasn't been a lot of food for them. And normally they would be up in the hills and they would find a lot of, uh, you know, native plants that grow in this area, but there isn't a lot of native plants growing. Besides the weed abatement for fires, there just hasn't been that much. We noticed the wrens didn't nest like they usually do this year. Normally there's a ton of wren babies and there hasn't been, so there's a lot of things. Even the hawks. Last year, the Cooper Hawks in there had five babies, and this year they only had three. Did more hatch and they didn't feed the youngest? Did they get off the eggs as soon as they hatched three? I mean, birds do a lot of things like that. If they know there's not enough food, they'll only feed or hatch for what they have enough. They're not gonna try to feed more than they can, normally. So they may have laid five eggs. I don't know, I wasn't up there, but this is how it works. And when they hatch the first three, they may have kicked the other eggs out or just pushed them aside because they knew they could not get enough food. Well, regular, your, your seed eaters and your insect eaters do the same thing. They'll feed what they can. Last year, we had a wren nest in the pepper tree and I think there were four or five babies in that nest. So things have been different. The hummingbirds nested a lot, but they're actually done. I don't think there's that many hummingbird nesting right now. So it's just too warm and a lot of them will leave. When it gets really hot, they'll go up to the hills because they've got to go somewhere where it's cooler because they do not do well in the heat. Yes, you'll have them in different areas, desert areas, wherever they are, but generally the big numbers will leave and some will stay, which is a good balance because this way there's enough food and hopefully cool places they can find to stay at until the heat breaks. So there's always going to be a change depending on the weather. Fruit beetles. We don't have a lot of fruit beetles. It's been too dry and too warm for them. And so um, I guess a lot did not hatch. We found the grubs, which were those awful looking big thick kind of caterpillars that don't really move much. You know, they don't really crawl. They, you find them underneath in the soil. You'll even find them in your totes. And if you go, oh my gosh, what's in my tote? If you dig around before you start planting, you find this big grub. It's like, the, like your thumb. That's okay. Those are fruit beetles. They actually are eating down all your matter. And they're doing exactly what you want them to do. It's when they come out and they're flying around. They're, I'm not a fan of them. That's when they do the damage to your fruit trees. And then they'll um, go ahead and they'll feed on celery. Oh, they love pollen. People don't talk about that. Fruit beetles love pollen. Given the choice, we've had a fig tree with fruit and a, right next to it, we've had celery that had all that pollen on them. And guess what? They picked the pollen. So they really, really do like pollen. But there hasn't been that many. Now, maybe in the next month or so, a few more will start hatching around. But Gary thinks he, or I shouldn't say hatch. What it is is they cocoon out and kind of like a ball and then they climb out of it and well there hasn't been that many but Gary said he saw one I thought I saw one because I thought it was a hummingbird and then I realized no I think it was a fruit beetle so that's been it I just wanted to come out here this morning have a cup of coffee now that's a different butterfly it was a real small you know, see my pepper plant I'm excited about my pepper plant Gary's going to take number three I had three pepper plants I got three pepper plants at the 99 cent store just before the lockdown last year. And it was one pot with three plants. There was a big one, a medium one, and a teeny, teeny one. Just the way they put the seeds in and they grew them and they left all three. I gave the medium one to my son-in-law who absolutely loves hot peppers. And let me tell you something, they're hot. And then I kept the big one and the teeny one. The teeny ones always struggled. We can walk over there for a minute. It's doing better now. I've trimmed it way down. Let's go look. Yes, I'm going to work on that wall in the next day or two. Let's see. That's the big, big one, which I trimmed down probably not enough, but it's doing fantastic. It's doing really good. These are not 
These are coming off the pepper tree. See, they fly around. I've got to stake it a little better, but we've been getting a lot of peppers. Let me tie, I should tie that up with a little bit of yarn. Trim it a little bit back again, but it's doing okay. We've got all the peppers we need, but there was a baby pepper plant growing in there, so I moved it out. And then this one, let me see if he took it. He didn't take it yet. I've been feeding this one. And now it's greening up really nice. I see all that new growth on the bottom. It's actually nicer now than it was even last year. We get peppers. It's going to throw flowers. In fact, I think there are some flowers down on the bottom. But Gary said he's going to put that in his garden. He loves those peppers. He cannot eat them straight. They are so incredibly hot. I think I've got a pepper here. Oh, I thought I picked. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. And these are like bell peppers. These are bell peppers. Look at that. <gasps> cool. I might wait till it gets red or I might do something with it soon. I'm not sure. Eggplant's been giving us a lot of eggplant. So that's been great. So anyways, he's going to take that one and then we'll walk back over here and see what's going on. It looks like I haven't done anything. But let me tell you something. I've been harvesting away in here and I'm getting ready to start a second grouping of growing in here. Where is it? There it is. Look at that. It was a teeny, teeny plant. And look how beautiful and full it is. This is, you're not going to set root in there or wrap around my, oh, it is wrapping around. It's going it's to be all right. This is a Korean melon. So that is fantastic. But this is the pepper plant. It was a baby seedling that came up in there and I moved it and it's layered in there and I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully it'll do fine. If it winters, oh, there's a dragonfly. I don't know if you can see him. He's flying around here. Look at that. Came to visit. Um, isn't this beautiful? So hopefully I'll do okay. But if it doesn't, looks like it's struggling with the cold in the winter, I'll just move it up against the wall or move it. This is the zucchini, which has been giving me tons of fruit. I don't know if there's any more fruit on it, but I see flowers starting. I'll have to keep an eye. Oh, and then these are my cuttings I did a while back. That's pepino out of Gary's garden. Oh, there is fruit down there. Look at that. Okay. So the cuttings are doing good. I don't know if I'll leave them. You know, I think I will. Because they can last for years, pepinos. And this will probably be composted in the winter. And there's another zucchini there. Isn't this cool? This has just been so great. So those, there's two of them in there. And there's a tomato plant now in there. So I'm not sure. I'll let that go for now. Right now, I'm not going to do too much. Oh, he's here. Actually, it's a female. She's probably getting away from all those. Oh, she left. It was a female dragonfly. Probably we'll do something with that later. That's the, no, this is broccoli. As long as the broccoli keeps going, I'm going to cater to it. Chop it down and let it keep producing broccoli. I picked a ton yesterday. And then this will probably be taken out at some point. And then this is some beets that are in here. Yep, so I got some beets. And this should have been taken out a long time ago. Every day I'm going to take it out. I don't know how I'm going to take it out, but I want the Korean melons to grow. I may just pull it and whatever happens to it happens to it. That is black sugar cane. So I need to get that out. The bucket is just layered. I can lift that, but I'm leaving it. went to seed. It's, I, it's a type of romaine lettuce. And it's now just, well, it just grows because the seeds just drop and everything grows. I grow all the lettuce I want now here. This died back. See what happened? I had moved it. I think this is when I moved. I can't remember. And it threw some tomato, you know, it might have been a determinant. And I should get the tomatoes off, get that out, and then leave it, because I want the Korean melons to grow and feed it heavily. But I make my own food. A lot of you have asked what, what brand or what do I buy as far as fertilizer, and, and I don't buy fertilizer. Years and years ago I did, but now I make my own. There's nothing wrong with buying. And this I've got to clear out. I've got to dig through and get the rest of the onions. I'm going to take the tops and just stick them in some water or some soil. And if the seeds mature, then I'll collect the seeds. And if they don't, they don't. It doesn't matter. Look at the size of that. Wow, that's, that's huge. So I've left them in here. Uh-oh. Oh, no, I want to replant in here. You know what all this is? See it? Can you see it? That's purple mustard. Okay. That's when I... I get sentimental and think, oh no, it's coming back. See, this is a purple mustard. I think this is the purple mustard. It got really big and I chopped it out 
and the seeds fell in there. Okay, you know, now change of plans. I will pull all the onions out. I'm going to leave the purple mustard because Gary loves it, but I am going to plant something else in here. I wanted to build it up a little bit more and get some more kitchen scraps in. There is another way of doing this. I may go ahead and put a flower pot, any type of planter pot in here. I could put it here, fill it up with kitchen scraps and leaves, sit it on top when this is all gone. Leave the purple mustard because Gary loves purple mustard. And I might do a watermelon in there. So we'll see. But now that they're all growing, I love when they grow on their own because there's absolutely zero work. Zero work. So now I've got two things. I could do that and put the watermelon, or I can go ahead and sprinkle some of the lettuce seed heads in there and get some lettuce growing among the mustard and leave it. There's another way of doing it. But I want to grow lettuce in the summer in a different area. I don't want it to bolt that quick. That's basically it. See, I've got a little celery that came up. I'm sure I did not plant it. <laughs> and then there's my rose bush. That's a cutting. I think you saw me. Oh, wow, this one's got thorns. So we're going to... Oh... I didn't even know there was another squash back there. Okay, you know I've got a bucket in the house. I'll get that out. Here's probably walking onions, even though it didn't walk. We'll see. Whoops, sorry. And the lettuce. Okay, so I can lift the rose off up at any time and put it in a bigger pot and move it somewhere. Probably in the bird garden. I think I will put it in the bird garden because that's what I want to build up with more flowers and things. This, the birds have been eating. See, this is long dead already fallen over this is lettuce but there's always going to be lettuce seeds in here they can't get them all there'll be a few they'll pick and pick and pick but there's literally like thousands and thousands of lettuce seeds in there so I'm going to sprinkle that around what I'm planning I'm going to sit down do you have a tote here what I'm planning on doing I don't think there's anything in here I kind of abandon it oh I guess there yes I don't know what that is. Oh, <gasps> it's cilantro. Coriander. Do I take it out? Nope. I, I kind of abandon it. This is a big no-no. If you're watching this, do not do as I do. Do as I say. I didn't put holes in this tote yet. <laughs> I didn't put holes because I was still deciding on where I wanted to put it. So what I do is I hand water it, and I know it, there's not too much water. It's, there's an eave here, so it's not going to get rained on with the no rain we're getting anyways. I don't water it with a hose or anything. I know exactly how much water I'm putting into it. I'm growing cilantro. Isn't that fun? See, you can see the seed. That's what I put in there. See the seed? That's a coriander seed. I had cilantro growing in here that went to seed. So I brought the little pot over. It was growing in a little pot. And I sprinkled it in, in there when the plant died back. And now I've got a whole bunch. So all, that means all these. And this is, I guess we'll leave it. Let me show you what I do. I'm going to get so much thumbs down for this. You're rambling. This is, I really need to make sure. Yeah, I should put these on a separate channel. Like maybe make a membership one. So if you really want to hear my nonsense. Oh my goodness, the dragonfly almost ran into me. See, I take this. And you can use a cup or anything you want. And I just very gently, how do I do? Okay, I, got, I don't want to kill anything. See? Up against the wall, see? So you're not really watering the plants or we'll squish them. And some of them already are, you know what? I'm gonna to have to leave it uncovered. I didn't realize they were growing that good. I saw them and then I thought they stopped. Okay, that's it. And then here, there's a couple drops there. I'll have to water it real gently. We'll leave it uncovered now. Now that I know there is coriander growing in there, I will leave it. And it doesn't get as much sunlight as those being up against the house. It won't get sunlight until after 12. So I guess I'm going to grow coriander now. But what I want to do is grow lettuce the same way. So what I may do... Maybe I'll put my lettuce seeds in there because this way it only get, it's going to get hot afternoon sun, which isn't that good. You don't really want it to get hot afternoon sun, but it's there. I have nothing to lose. It doesn't work out. It bolts and I collect the seeds or I compost the, the old plants and 
it's a win-win no matter what because what I'm doing is I'm making my own soil. It seems like we're growing a lot of food and we are, but we do let a lot of it go back to nature because there's so much so the animals can take it around here if they want. Not all of it. And we do freeze. I'll be freezing a lot of tomatoes this year because I'm going to have a ton of tomatoes. They're all over the place. But I'm also planting this year more plants that we eat, not just plants that, you know, we don't eat and we just end up with a bunch. Now, we can't do much with the papaya. I've given that away to friends and neighbors and families, and we still end up with a ton of papayas. And then if we miss them or they get heavy or it gets really hot, they just drop. And that's when Gary grabbed a couple of them that's rotting. But I'm going to leave them sit here. They can just rot the dickens out and let the hummingbirds collect insects out of that and feed from the feeder here. Now here I have a standalone feeder and a garden instead of having a cluster. If I had a cluster of feeders, I would have probably more hummingbirds. But having one feeder, you've got one bird that's trying to protect it. So that's what happens. But I do have another one way down there. You can probably see it down there in the chair garden, which I haven't gotten to, which is already growing on its own. I've got peppers in there. I've got stuff growing in there. So that's that. So that's all. You know, I wasted 20 minutes of your time by rambling on just having coffee. But I figured I'd say hello. Things are going okay. I like when it's quiet. Okay, they're working a little bit on the house now. They must have just got there. It's almost done. It'll be nice when they're building on the inside. They've got the black paper up. And soon they'll do, do the siding. There's a hummingbird. See, he's at the feeder. And then it should be quiet. It's been a lot quieter because they're done with the outside of the house. And they have a free show here all the time, don't they? We should have bought the house and then we could have looked down here and figured out, ooh, with binoculars, maybe we should go do this today. No, yeah, I could never afford a house like that. You know what's funny? I don't want such a big house like that. I like my house. I like where I live. I picked it. And I'm not allowed to complain about it. I complain about my kitchen because it's so tiny. I mean, I want to do cooking in the kitchen, but I can't get the camera far enough back. And um, Gary says, don't complain to me. I didn't know you when you bought the house. And that's true. He didn't. I didn't buy the house for the house. I bought the house because I was looking in this area and I looked at the land first. Number one is land. This is the way I feel. Location is number one. You would say, why would you do it that way? They are hammering, so we're going to have to cut this out, out soon. Number one, as I said, with location, is you can't change your location. No matter what you do, you can't change the location and you can't change the land. So that's the first thing I looked at. Then you look at the house. You know, I wanted good schools for my kids. I wanted... Um, land set up at, uh, I wanted more seclusion and it, and it was beautiful. I had no complaints on the land. The second thing is the house and that was an issue. Though it had enough space for all of us, that kitchen, I don't know. And I'm only the second one to live in the house. It's because the first people lived in it and raised all their kids in it, but they didn't build it. They bought it from somebody else who built it. So whoever built it obviously didn't cook. And I don't know what they were thinking. They built a big living room. The teeniest kitchen that looks like it fit into a camper. And literally, I can reach from the sink across the kitchen bo back both ways. So you call it a camper. And the camper kitchen. And like I said, the rooms, they made the bedrooms good size. And they made the bathroom so tiny which is fine. I don't spend a ton of time in the bathrooms. I'm not worried about the bathrooms. It was nice to have big bedrooms for the kids, but um, the kitchen, come on. They, 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 at least there's a breakfast room there. That's where the hummingbirds, you see me cleaning and changing out the window, the feeders all the time. But you could change it, but again, that takes a ton of money and I don't want to do that. So I'm trying to figure out how to do cooking in there to get the camera back far enough. Gary has offered to make a hole in the wall. 
I can make a hole in the wall from the family room or living room, whatever you want to call it, so I can put a camera back, and then you'd be able to see me. I don't know. I'm, I'm working on it. So that's it, but I do, I do like it here because it's quiet. I think I've told the story. I didn't tell my mom what I was doing, and she came out here as soon as I got the house. There's a dragonfly. Let's see if we can zoom in real quick. Oh, he left. No, oh, he's back. You know what they do, dragonflies? Watch. He lands on top. If they don't leave the area, they always go back to the same spot. Watch, watch, watch. See if he's going to come back. See, see? Oh, you know what the problem is? The hummingbird's chasing him away. I've seen that. Hummingbirds think dragonflies are a threat to them. I don't know why they do that. Yeah, the hummingbird just chased the dragonfly away. She came out here and she started yelling. Oh my gosh! That's what she said to me. You can't live like this! She went on the balcony, on the deck. How can you live like this? You have no neighbors. I have neighbors. I have neighbors. But my mother is a city girl where I was raised. Told you I've been raised in the middle of Los Angeles where you can hear your neighbors the whole block. You can hear, I mean, your window faces another one's window and their houses were built on top of each other. And, you know, I was never a fan of that. Personally, I was never a fan of that at all. My sister didn't mind. I see a fruit beetle. I officially, you know, I'm not sure. Let's take a look and see if it's a fruit beetle or a bumblebee. Let's see if I can get in there quick enough. I love my camera. You no, know, it's a bumblebee. I don't know. If it's a fruit beetle, I'm running. You know why I don't like fruit beetles? They have no sense of direction. Something that doesn't have a sense of direction, I don't want to be near. A bumblebee will see you. They'll come up to you. We could go take a look, but they'll come up to you and look at you and leave. A fruit beetle seems like they don't know if you're there, and they literally will whack into you. Guess what? It's not a bumblebee. And look what he's eating. The tool came off the tree, so something got up there and ate it. And he found the papaya. That's the first official fruit beetle I got. I'm gonna shut the camera off in a minute for this second. I'm gonna shut the camera off for a second because I wanna actually get a photo. Okay, I'm back. There he is. He is eating a papaya. Look at that. I gotta get tool wrapped around here because the tool is not gone good. And if it was on better, see it's a piece missing, then they can just jump over a, a, any rodent and get up there. I've actually seen a crow up there, a raven. But that tool needs to be wrapped. If it was better and wrapped in a position where they couldn't pass it, right now they can pass it. Got lazy because Gary said we got so much papaya he didn't bother. Look at this. Isn't this cool? I haven't done anything yet with this little thing I bought years and years and years ago that I didn't need. Had all these plans for it. But I still want to do something with it. And I still need to set up something here. I have an idea of what I'm going to set up. But... Look at this, oh my gosh. I guess I have a bucket in the house. Isn't that cool? Oh my gosh. This is a hundred tomato plants. Now the smallest ones are gonna die back by nature. They're just gonna die back and the strongest will survive. This is not the way to grow. See, I only tooled the front. I don't even remember why, there was a reason. But, and it was also to, to keep the tomatoes from flopping over, so the tool will hold them too, say. But the thing is, I wanted to see what would happen because it was my mistake. Now this butterfly will lay her eggs here and then there'll be caterpillars. I don't see any, there was, but here's the thing, the bush tits come in here. Boy, they, they're amazing. They can hang upside down and just eat away. I'm leaving all this. And then this, oh, this was supposed to come out. I planted those seeds and uh, some of them were the sun golds. And some of them were other tomatoes. Oh gosh, they look so beautiful. Do you look at the stalks on them? Can you see how thick this stalk is? This is, this is Mother Nature's soil. You know, you've got the compost on the bottom and then a little bit of, of potting mix on the top. But this is just amazing. And this is a watermelon. And I'm not 100% sure what type of watermelon it is. Funny story, I think I've told you. I was growing a watermelon in the kitchen window or someplace. 
and I lost the seed. It didn't grow. So I wanted to use the pot over and I didn't want to have a seed in there and then have something come up, which I would know watermelon anyways. I looked all through the soil and I couldn't find the watermelon seed. Now, if it's the one I'm thinking of, it's a Charleston, which is going to be a big watermelon. So anyways, I think I planted something else in there and then I brought it out here and then all of a sudden a watermelon grew in there. I did not put a watermelon seed out here. That's the odd thing. I did not put a watermelon seed in that tote. And one watermelon plant came up. Temperatures were right. They need the soil to be at least 60 degrees and they like it really warm. So now I've got a watermelon and my big debate is do I chop out all those beautiful tomatoes or try to yank them out? You wait too long, you can't move them. Way too long, you pull them, you tear up the trichomes on them and they get infections in them or things get in there and it kills the tomato plants. I want to get the red roselle out unless I leave them. I could leave there. I've got red roselle growing in there and move a lot of the tomatoes out. There's peppers in there. I absolutely want the peppers. The peppers I can grow here where my pizza garden is. Isn't that gorgeous? I've got tomatoes all through here now. All through there. Look on the back underneath. Can you see all the tomatoes? A whole cluster of tomatoes. This has been fantastic and I'm in the middle of getting ready to set that one up there. So I have to decide where I'm going to put them. But pepper plants would be better to be put up either against, you know, the house behind me here or up against the wall so it'd be warmer. But anyways, you know what? I think when we started getting, we, we, I was sidetracked with what it was, a bumblebee or fruit beetle, which we now know is a fruit beetle. Normally, if it was a normal year, I'm trying to talk over the plane, there would have been uh, 50 fruit beetles hanging on that one papaya, but there hasn't been a lot of fruit beetles, so there's one. And that's okay. I'm not going to try to go run after it or do anything to it because that one, when it's done, will hopefully find the mate, lay eggs. Their eggs go into the soil, and then they munch on all your compost. They could break everything down. They're good at that stage. And if you got rid of all of them, you would eliminate them in the area. And you don't want to eliminate. We've got enough things eliminated in our area. And that's, that's a conversation to have at some point. Because we had a lot of stuff when I moved here. There were badgers. There were red foxes. There were silver foxes here. There was all kinds of skunks. There was raccoons. I have come home and come down my driveway to watch a raccoon that's trying to drink out of a hose. Um, there was all kinds of stuff. And that road runners. Oh, you'd step out here and there'd be road runners everywhere. And they're all pretty much gone. There's a few, but you don't see them anymore. Bobcat, used to see Bobcat. Never got a video of them. So a lot of that stuff is gone. That's because the coyotes wiped them all out. There used to be cats. I've had people say, you can't put bird seed out there. The cats are gonna get the, uh, the birds. We don't have any cats. Not at all. Somebody leaves their cat out all day, there is no cat left. That's the number one thing that the coyotes wiped out were the cats. Then they went through and they started wiping out raccoons. So the raccoons moved into the way into this busy city. And the skunks have done the same thing. Skunks are amazing. They went into the schools. And they're underneath the schools right now because it's the safest place. Can you imagine how smart they are? And then what else? Oh, the foxes are gone. So they must have wiped them out. And they're not necessarily, you're thinking, well, won't they fight back? They don't necessarily the coyotes go after adult foxes but they will the cubs that are playing when they find them because you know the parents including coyotes park their babies somewhere let's use that term they'll park them and they'll basically tell them you stay here while we go hunt you know when they take them out from wherever they've been raised in a hole or they're not going to find a lot of caves here but whatever place they find and when they park them there that's when something you know would come and find them that's what, what happened to a lot of the bobcats too one of the things, you know, different things happen to all these animals, but that's what they do. They go after the babies. Even I think our deer population would be down because they could easily take down a fawn. So, yeah, there's just an overabundance of coyotes. We don't need to get into that. Anyways, things are getting noisy. The morning's getting late. So what I think I'm going to do is sign off. And if I put this up, well, I'm sorry you had to listen to me. <laughs> Because that's what I'll get. What is she doing? Just sitting and talking? Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm sitting and talking. Oh, you got the trash trucks now in the area. And you got the builders up there building away. And 
I think I'm done. I'm going to finish my coffee. I think I'm going to go work in the garden. I'm actually thinking of going to a thrift store. I've done that once so far this year. I actually did it twice, but I really didn't, but I did. What happened was I went to a thrift store and I was so excited the first time, a couple few weeks ago I went. Then I went back to the thrift store the same day. Gary went with me, he went twice too, because he saw something he wanted that he should have bought the first time. Headphones, so he can listen to the radio. Uh, wireless headphones they had for $20 or something. And he should have spoke up while he was there, so he went back, but I think I'm gonna do that today. Gives me a sense of normalcy to be able to go out. I have not gone to a dollar store and I'm thinking of getting some stuff there. There's things I want that I can show you for a dollar, how we can make our own plant food. So I'm thinking of doing that today too. And then if I do that, I'll of course bring my cell phone that's been acting up on me. And hopefully I'll be able to, another female dragonfly. The females are coming here, probably trying to stay away from the males that are breeding with them and bothering them. So I think I'm gonna go do that. And then I'll go to the dollar store, show you a couple things, and we'll do more of that so you can see what you can get for a dollar to make fabulous stuff. I think I want a couple colored buckets, little ones. Because see, the floral pots are nice, but see what happens? The rabbit comes by and they're so light, they get tipped over. But the buckets always stay upright, and those are my favorite buckets. Got that from Walmart. They teased me. They put an ad out with all different colors. Well, they don't have the colors. They were an old ad. That's the only color they've got. But they had purple and turquoise and green, and they don't have it. But those are nice. I like the shape of those. But I want each one to have a bucket for sure. And I would like it to look nice. So it's it, it does not going to cost me that much. A, a dollar a bucket. So I'm going to go get a bucket. That's the Home Depot one. That's the Home Depot one too. Now that one that's yellow has been out in the sun. It was a water feature for like two years. I think two years. So that one bleached out from the sun and that one is the right color. And then that one is from Uline, the yellow one, where a lot of my colored buckets that you see here, all these colored buckets are from Uline, U-L-I-N-E dot com. They sell all kinds of colored buckets. That's where I got all these buckets. The bright blue one is actually a Walmart bucket. So is the light blue one on the top. I got that from Walmart once, quite a few years ago. I walked in there and I like that color, so I bought that. But the rest of them, the green ones, the yellow ones, the orange ones, purple ones, navy blue ones, whatever you want to call them, those are all from Uline. So if you're looking for something really unique, I got that there. But like I was saying, see the floral pots just fall over. So I want to get small buckets. I don't want it in the way. I don't want to plant underneath. I could, I mean, there's no reason why I couldn't, but here's the thing. If I plant something, then I invite the rabbits in. The rabbits won't eat sage. They won't eat oregano, but there was lettuce over there, but they won't eat basil. So I could do that, but I actually really want to conserve water. So if I put the buckets there, then any water that slowly drips out of there, I can come back at the end of the day and rewater other plants. I can add water to it because this is all making a constant compost tea and then water other plants. So I really want to catch the water right now. So I'm going to do it that way. So anyways, you know what? I am. And there's a white bucket back there. It says food grade. Do you see? I don't know if you can see it back there. Right through there is a white bucket. And there's a sticker on it. It says food grade. It's just a paper sticker. It's, um, I believe that's a five. It doesn't matter. Five and two are safe to use because they're not going to break down until they're over 180 degrees. They're not going to get 180 degrees when you have soil in there. So they just stick a sticker on it and they just sold it that way. But you can grow in any color you want. You want to go with white so there's no dyes? Go with white. I'm, I'm, but think of it when you go to the grocery store, that's something to do. Turn over the plastic. You'll see the triangle. And they're either going to be one of two numbers. They're either going to be a two or they're going to be a five. Four tends to be plastic bags that you get with stuffing that you ordered online. Those are usually four. You're not going to find anything out of four. Three, you never want to use a three. If you ever see a three, that means it cannot be recycled. It came from toxic materials. You never, never use a three. I only found the three once and it was on the bottom of a glue bottle. And I put it aside to get a good video of it, and I must have thrown it away. So I never got a video of it. So that's the only time I saw a three. 
Number one is clear. That's usually your clear water bottles. Those will break down quicker and they dissolve. You don't really want to grow in a one, but the thing is you're not going to grow in a one because if you've got a container that was a one, it, would, it wouldn't last you long. It literally will break down from the sun. So they're two and a five. But if you look around the grocery store, like I said, you're going to see cottage cheese, sour cream, yogurt, coffee, everything now. Everything's packed in plastic. Look at your bottles that they're putting hot sauce in with tomato sauce. You're going to find underneath, it's going to be a two or five, food grade. Government certified food grade. So that's it. All right, well, I think I'm going to go do something. Oh, we got a breeze. I'm going to go to the thrift store. I think I will, and I'll get a video of how we can make our own plant food. I'm going to pick up a, something for a buck, and... No, I'll go from there. And if I don't go today, I'll go soon. If I don't go, I'll show you and tell you anyways when I get to that video on how to make your own plant food. And then again, if you want to buy, you absolutely buy. There's nothing wrong with buying. You, I'm going to say this over and over. You do whatever will work for you. If it's going to make you grow, you do whatever will work for you. Grow a little. I don't care if it's one little pot or if it's one tote. But I will tell you, that when you start with totes, they grow and grow and grow on you. Even people that swore they would never use totes. Gary has got probably more totes than me in his garden now. And my daughter who swore she wasn't going to use totes, she's come over and taken some of my buckets. I said, go get your own. She said, you have so many. I've named them. She thinks they're named. You took Herman home. And she said, I can't believe, Mom. I can't. She believes in me. I can't believe you named the buckets that you gave me. Because she comes over and she'll see lettuce growing and she'll grab it. And, oh, can I have this? She's taking home lettuce and garlic and a few other things. And I tell her that Herman's not here now. <laughs> and she believes me. I don't know if she believes me or she's tolerating me. Anyways, I'm getting goofy now. So I better just finish my coffee and go see if I can do something different today. And quit talking your ear off. You all have a wonderful, wonderful day if I put this up. If I put this up, I'm crazy because I don't think anybody's interested in all this. But if you are, give me a thumbs up and tell me, yes, we love hearing you ramble. Don't give me a thumbs down because if I don't get that many, I won't do it again. But just give me a thumbs up. And you know what? It does really help when people like and subscribe. It gives me the incentive to do more. It gives Gary the incentive. He's the one I've got to push to do more because he's always so busy. And, well, it, it just, it, it also helps with, I guess, YouTube. I don't know. I don't know. YouTube told me one day, they messaged me, you're not telling anybody to like and subscribe. And I th said, well, don't they know? And they said, no, sometimes people don't know. Some people don't have an account. I mean, I know my mother watches me, but she doesn't have an account. She's got the TV I got her at the thrift store for $10, plugged in an Amazon Fire Stick. There's no account on there that's set up, you know, with YouTube. Oh, she can go to YouTube, but there's no account. So she watches me without an account. So I know a lot of you don't have an account with YouTube. And that's the only ones they can really count to see how many people are really watching. So I guess that's it. I think I've talked enough. I'm going to go get some stuff done and try to remember to get those tomatoes off. And maybe I'll make a pizza one day soon. I made chili and enchiladas and lasagna the other day. I like doing that because it lasts two days. So I give an extra day to work in the garden at night. Just warm something up. Anyways, that's it. All right, I'm leaving. My fountain hasn't gone on yet because the sun hasn't come on this side of the house, which is nice. So I have shade in the morning. And then there'll, there'll be sun here probably in the next hour or two. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat with your girl. Bye-bye, everybody.